All right, I want to thank you for uh, sticking around with me and helping me out there. Uh, I just hate making audio files too long, so I like to break them up every now and then. Um, so we're back talking about ethical practice in the marketing and selling of title insurance a little more, some more information. Um, let's talk a little bit about marketing tips for title reps. All right. Now, you guys can go in different directions, title reps, closing agents, mobile closers. Uh, we're, I, I hesitate to say that you're going to go into any kind of abstractor yet. Uh, you're probably going to need uh, some experience into that. So uh, let's just talk about title insurance sales rep, okay? So you're new to the business. First of all, let me say welcome. Welcome to real estate. It's a $14.7 trillion real estate uh, business. More hands transfer, more money transfers real estate than the value of all the stocks on the New York Stock Exchange, right? There was $14.7 trillion exchanged hands in like 2015. Welcome to part of that business, all right? Being in that real estate world includes the title insurance business. That's what you guys have chosen to get. Um, this business is very rewarding and very fun, all right? Now, a lot of people don't like to use the word fun when talking about work. Now, don't get me wrong. We're not going to go out and, you know, have clown parties and things like that. But it is fun from the standpoint that it's never a dull moment. And there are uh, highs and lows. And, boy, it's fun when you have a an issue and you can solve the issue and you solved it and things come off and everything works out boy that's a good feeling now when the first pro when the first uh what's the old saying hits the fan sure there's there's that valley part that you got to go oh crap but the good thing is or the fun thing to me and it's the same in the brokerage world is the fact that one day you might be doing one thing the next day you might be doing another you know, you might be working on deals with a farmer for farmland, and then you're working on, excuse me, title work. I need to, let me get my coffee going here again. Um, getting close to the end of the course, and it's tearing up my throat. Um, I guess I need to put some whiskey in my coffee, or put coffee in my whiskey, one of the two. Uh it, it's it's different. That's what the fun part is. The rewarding part is that you are actually involved in a transaction that is probably with 95% of everybody you deal with going to be the single biggest purchase of their life. And often, whenever a home gets bought, it's because it is a large transition in a person's life. Think about that. Almost every time that a person has a huge transition in life, there's a home purchase that goes along with it. I know what you're thinking. No, I'm, think about that. Think about some of the major changes in your life that you had. There's almost always a home purchase that's tied to it. All right? You get married. You move out of your apartment, your wife has an apartment, and what's the first thing you guys do as a newly married couple? Right, you buy a home. So you buy a home. Now, the next thing a married couple that does is typically what? Have kids. What do you do with that? You buy another home because now you need a home for two or three or four kids. Cool. So, so far, now... Push that down the road. Now, you may move in there three or four times as your kids get older or bigger or more kids. Um, but then the next major change is what? That's right. Kids go away. And what do we call that? The empty nester syndrome. Now, what happens to most people when this happens? Right. They downsize. You know, I did that. Well, I don't even want to talk about it. Actually, I, I, I when never mind. Most people downsize when the kids go off to college, all right? I'm a little weird example because I got such a good price. I actually upsized, but the point is still there. 
my kids went away. I actually bought a bigger house <laughs> uh, uh, when my kids left. At one point, well, technically still is, my wife and I now live in about a 4,700 square foot house. That's way bigger than either one of us need, but it allows us to do several things. I mean, she's got a craft room. I got an office. I got a cigar basement. We've got pool table, things like that. And then obviously the last one is, is when you get too old to take care of yourself, what do you do? Yeah, you move, you sell your home, but you move into assisted living. So that's what I'm talking about. Almost every major change, significant change in your life involves the purchase of a home. Now, I'm not saying that's true, and I'm not going to write a law called Modulin's Law, but I'm telling you that's pretty much true. Think about it. All right. Now, with it being rewarding and fun because you're helping these people through those major changes in their life, you also have the other side of that coin. It can be very frustrating and upsetting, specifically when a deal falls apart and then the closing doesn't happen. That's the frustrating part. And I understand that it's not so much that we don't get paid. Trust me, that's one of the points. But it's also frustrating from a standpoint of somebody that you have been helping for a number of uh, days or months, potentially, in a large transaction, in a big transition in their life, now didn't happen. And that can be as memorable to somebody as the actual success. You know, hey... Remember the time when we were buying that house and it fell through? That's going to stick around as well. So you've got to remember that with the good times do come some frustrating times. Okay? Now, I remember my very first day as a realtor. You guys are all looking and sitting out there and I'm looking at you all bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. <clears throat> and some of that's fear. Remember that you are getting in a career that you up to now probably didn't know anything about. But I will tell you, as I'm standing up here teaching this course, when I started my career, there is no way I knew as much as I know now. What's the old saying? I wish I knew then what I know now. So do not panic. That is why that you are going to be working with another person uh, you know, in the office that has been doing this, like the manager or the owner, that is, they're going to guide you and help you. So don't panic um, it, because you're you're afraid and you're going to have to go out and get entrusted with somebody's career stuff. No, uh, I do have my phone on silent, but uh, I get text. Somebody's actually going to show got a listing showing on one of my listings. Um, so just take that knowledge, run with it, be open and learn as much as you can, all right? So let's talk a little bit more about some more marketing tips. And before we do that, I want to ask you a couple questions about marketing and about your plan for the future because I want to give you a story. Um, a friend of mine that got into this business, basically her story was, you know, she got her license, went through course, her first day, blah, 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 blah. We're not going to get into all that. Um, until she got one of her very first phone calls when another agent, she was marketing towards Realtors, because you're going to find that's one of your big clients, right? Donna? Well, we're not actually going to talk about it in here on how to find clients. We will talk a little bit, but needless to say, I'm going to give you some tips on how to find clients. But traditionally, and I'm not going to tell you the number, uh, I am not, while I am licensed, I have a title producer's license and I have an instructor's license. I am not, nor have I ever been an active title producer salesman. Never worked for a title company on a full-time basis to be a sales rep. So I'm going to tell you something 
that is just based on my knowledge from this side of the fence as a realtor that most of your business is going to come from us. The question was, can you sell to uh, the consumer? Yeah, you most certainly can. The problem is most people don't know who you are. And it's not that they don't know who you are. They just don't understand what a title company does. What they do understand is how a realtor works. So a lot of times when the realtor gets the deal put together and then they say title work, most consumers, and very seldom do I have I ever had a consumer that knew enough to tell me what they wanted, typically say, who do you recommend? Oh, well, I recommend so-and-so at Chicago Title, and so-and-so here, and so-and-so there, and let them pick one, all right? Because they, unless they happen to have a friend that's in the title business, they don't really know, they know even less about title than they do about real estate. So most of the business comes from the connection and the relationships that you're going to build with a realtor so that when the time comes for me to take Susie's seller to get title work, they're going to say, oh, well, I trust you, Raymond. Who do you want to use? And I'm going to say, well, I have a relationship with X and I'm going to use that company. So, okay, they can order. I mean, sure, a, a, a seller could say, hey, Raymond, before we sell, can we pull title company? I want you to go to Smith Title. Sure, okay, I'll do that. Most of them don't know that, unless, like I said, they just happen to have a friend that works at a title company, and they want to throw them some business, which there's nothing wrong with that. That's exactly how this whole world works. But back to what I was saying, most of your connections then are going to be through real estate agents, maybe even lenders, potentially home inspectors. And if you're not writing those three down, yeah, you ought to. <laughs> I think I swallowed a bug. <laughs> um, you ought to, because that's probably going to be your main go-to right out of the gate as a first person anyway, as, as your first marketing technique. So anyway, this girl was telling me a story that, you know, she was making cold calls and I don't know what she was expecting since she was actually working, making cold calls. One of the clients that one of the agents she called said, oh, great. I'm glad you called. I need some help working on my business. Can we meet and have coffee and you can tell me how you're going to help me? So therein lies the key. Therein lies the key, all right? When you're marketing, probably your real estate people, your mortgage people, maybe even other title companies to some smaller extent, but I'm going to throw home inspectors in there, uh, all are in the same field of, of, of competition, all trying to get the same client. Now, on the bright side, we all can use this client the same. So because I got one client doesn't mean you can't get him because we do different areas. All right. So there are other title sales reps out there that are creating relationships with mortgage people that have been working on the business now 10, 15, 20 years. I can name two or three sales reps that I've got that I like that I know one of them has been in the title business 20 years. All right. So you're not alone out there. You have to go out and get the business. Now you have the same right they have about going after the same business they're going after. But here's the key. In the real estate world, I get a lot of people come through there and they get a license and they go, hey, I'm going to work on bank owned homes. How do I do that? And I tell them the same thing. Um, I ask them the same questions. I mean, there's already hundreds of bank-owned realtors out there that have been doing the business 10, 12, 15, 18 years. What are you going to do better than they're already doing so that you can get the bank's business? All right? And you guys know how this is. 
Think about going to a gas station. When you guys go to the gas station that you always go to, and we all go to the same gas station. Now, it's not the same for me as it is for you, but I, what I mean is, how many times have you passed up a gas station to go to another gas station because that's my gas station, right? What does another gas station have to do to draw you away from them to make you want to go to another gas station? Cheaper prices, better service, little toys that you get, free coffee, anything like that. So you've got to ask yourself, how are you going to stand out from the competition? How are you going to stand out from the competition? Title reps all the time bring donuts and bagels to office meetings. They talk about online calculators for title quotes, and they give you rate cards, and they all do the exact same thing. If you do this, you're going to fail, all right? Because you're doing what someone else is already doing, and they've been doing it longer and better than you're doing it now. Not that you're not good, it's just that you have no experience. So if a new title rep walked into my office, the modeling group, and said, I want to be your title rep, the first question that I'm going to ask them is, what are you doing differently than the one I've been using for the last five years is doing? If you've got an answer to that, then, hey, let's have a new relationship. Let's talk, okay? Most realtors don't really care about donuts. They don't really care about online calculators. They don't really care about pretty flyers that you've made and that you're going to leave here. They don't really care about, please, 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 do not ever tell me that you're going to give good customer service because there's not a company out there that's going to say, we're striving to give bad customer service. Everybody better give good customer service. What I want to know as an agent is, um, and somebody jokingly has told this to me before about me, that it's I2AR. It's all about Raymond. What are you going to do for me? How are you going to help me get more buyers, more listing, more clients, more online exposure? Do you have better systems that can help me create business and streamline it faster? It's all about more, more, more. What are you going to do for me that will allow me to then help you? What's the old Tom Cruise? Help me to help you. All right. You've got to develop your own value proposition. What's going to make you stand out from competitors? Okay. If you can show true value as a business builder instead of just an order taker, you're going to be very successful in this business, right? Now, did you get what I mean? An order taker is someone that comes in and goes, hey, Raymond, I'm working for a title company. Call me when you need something. And then they just wait for me to call them so I can go, hey, I've got a new listing. Do the thing. Do the title work. That's an order taker. you got to help me develop that maybe it's going to be a, a, a my overall business plan maybe it's going to help me develop a plan just for that property so that we can work on it together so that when i get that uh, buyer or the other agent come through i can use you because of this system all right once again we're going to take a quick audio break so that we can uh, reset this for these guys at home home oh. 